please join me in the call to worship. Uh, the heavens are telling the glory of God. They are a marvelous display of his craftsmanship. Day and night they keep on telling about God. Without a sound of word, silent in the skies, their message reaches up to all the world. Let us worship the Lord. First in silence, and then let us pray together, confessing our sin before the Lord. Let's pray. Holy One, at times when we hear the bad news of the world, it is though we've been in the middle of a bad dream, and then we turn over and go back to sleep, ignoring the plight of your children. It is hard to see tragedy and suffering. It is hard to admit whatever responsibility we might have in the plagues of the world. It is hard to work for the good when the good seems so far off. So help us, dear Lord. Give us courage to see clearly. Give us strength to do our part. Give us grace to forgive others and ourselves.
and give us faith to follow you. This is our prayer, offered in the name of Christ. Amen. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways, the unrighteous their thoughts, for he will have mercy and abundantly pardon. Friends, believe the good news of the Gospels. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 13. Now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity diffeth. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing, yet as he ought to know. But if any man love, loves God, the same is known to him. As concerning therefore the eating of those things that are offered and sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there is none other God but one. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there may be gods many and lords many, but to us there is but one God, the Father of whom all of all things, and we in him and one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things and we by him. How bet there is not in every man the knowledge for some with conscience of the idols unto the hour, eat it and a thing offered unto an idol. And their conscience being weak is defiled. But meat commendeth us not to God, for neither if we eat are we the better, neither if we eat not are we the worse. But t take heed lest by any means this liberty of your becomes this liberty of yours becomes a stumbling block to them that are weak. For if any man sees the thee which has, hasn't knowledge set at meat in an idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboiled, to eat those things which are offered to idols. All through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish, for whom Christ died. But when ye sin so against the brethren, and with their weak conscience ye sin against Christ, Wherefore, if meat makes my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. 1 through verse 7. That's John 14, verses 1 through 7. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you unto myself so that where I am, you will be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do not know him and have seen me. Here ends this reading of God's holy word. His name be glory and praise both now and forever. Years ago, I learned an old saying. And it went something like this. There are three sides to every story. Do you know the three sides to every story? There's your side, there's my side, and then there's the truth. You know, over the years, I have come to realize how accurate that is. Not only that, I have certainly seen that played out before my very eyes over the past six months of this year. Because it seems like there is always three sides to every story. As a child I grew up and I was taught to respect not only my elders, I was taught to respect people that were in an authority role. Your mother and father, 
your teacher, the cop on the beat, the pastor at the church, the mayor, the governor, the president, all of these folks. You respected them and you respected the office that they held. So recently, a few months ago, when I saw the person that runs the health department for the state of Pennsylvania, she came out and she told us that the pandemic was upon us, that we needed to do several things to stay safe and to protect one another, to be respectful of one another. And the one by now you're tired of hearing it is we need to social distance. And we've learned how to do that. You don't need those markings on the floor at the grocery store anymore. You know what six feet is, right? And they also told us that you needed to wear a mask because it prevented the spread of disease. And so I was not particularly comfortable with doing that. It's hot. There's a lot of reasons, but I wore it. Because not only was it the right thing to do, but you respect people in those roles and positions. Now, not long ago, I ran into a study, in fact, I was listening to this, and I got this, this, this paper that somebody sent to me that was written by Dr. Cyril Wecht. And does anybody know who Dr. Wecht is? Now, Dr. Wecht, I mean, I grew up with Dr. Wecht. Not only that, my dad worked closely with him. I knew him. I talked to him several times. A fascinating man. He was actually somebody who had both a law degree. He was a lawyer and a doctor. A pretty capable guy. Not only was the coroner in Allegheny County, but he's a world-renowned pathologist. So I read this thing, and he basically scoffed at the whole idea of this mask thing. And he said, you don't need that. It's not going to do any good. And I looked at that, and I said, you know what? That's not what I'd been hearing. And I'm not telling you that was my moment to throw the mask in the trash can. It just merely began to tell me that there's two sides to the story. And who's telling the truth? And it has nothing to do with the truth, because I don't believe either one of them are politically motivated. Certainly, Cyril Wecht isn't. He's not running for anything anymore. On the other hand, I don't think that, 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 that the director, that, that, I mean, Dr. Levine, she's, she's a doctor. She's not going to risk her credentials and trying to do the right thing. The question I'm having is, is I don't know what's the truth. And I'm not judging anybody. I'm just, I don't know. So you know what I did? I did what any reasonable person did. I figured I'd start to do my own research. In fact, when all this started, and I give thanks for the folks, I look so many of our session folks are here today, and so many of them and so many of you have told me, you tried to read everything you could get your hands on. You wanted to know what was going on. And I don't know about you, but the more I read, the more confused I get. So finally, I, I went to somebody who's been a part of the church here, who's, who's a very, very good medical doctor and, and a very respected, well known, and, and you know what, and I trust them. And, and they said to me, you know, Dr. Levine is right. And I'm like, okay. So I get it. So two weeks ago, I'm, I'm powering a softball tournament. And it's out, way out in the country. And it's hot like it was yesterday. And so they tell you to hydrate. And so I'm going to do that. And this gentleman comes over to me between the fence. And he says, here, he says, he says here you go, ref. He says, have a, have a bottle of water. Well, I was so afraid to touch it because heaven knows, you know. But it was sealed and I was thirsty. And so I drank the water. So in between the games, I bump into this guy. He comes up to me. He says, you want a sandwich? And I'm not going to take any food from a stranger. <laughs> And I says, oh, man, I don't know. I says, you know, with the COVID and all this stuff. He says, well, I'm a doctor. And I'm like, yeah, okay, right. But we got to talking, and he really was. And I'm not going to tell you which hospital, but, I mean, not only is he a doctor, he's a very well-respected surgeon in our area. I'm not going to tell you who because everybody's going to get in trouble when he says this, right? And I, he says, you know, he says, his daughter's playing softball. He says, I got two daughters out here. I says, and he says, I'm perfectly comfortable with him being here. He says, they're fine. And I'm like, no, wait a minute. I had another doctor just tell me it's not. And it's not that I don't believe anybody. I don't trust anybody. I don't even know who to ask anymore. Because we got two sides of the story. And I'm not even talking politically motivated. Just there's, there's your side. There's my side. And somewhere in the middle of this, there has to be some truth. And I don't know where it is. Now, when it comes to masks, this isn't so bad. 
Because I'll tell you what I was thinking about this. I don't know much about medical, and I, you know, I don't know much about science either, but I know a little bit about the Bible. And so I'm looking for some counsel, some advice in the scripture. And you know, one of the things that I stumble, you'll like that, upon, isn't necessarily looking up about pandemics and plagues, although the Bible talks a little bit about that too. What I come across is this passage that Larry shared with you just moments ago in 1 Corinthians 8. Because what's happening there is the Apostle Paul has gotten a letter from the church at Corinth. And the people at Corinth, they're... They're in conflict with each other. And they're fighting and they're arguing and they're divided. Sound like anybody you know these days? So there is division. And I'll tell you what they're fighting about. They are fighting about food offered to idols. Now let me ask you a question. And I, what difference does that make, right? Does that matter to you? But it mattered to them to the point there the church was going to implode, the culture, the society was going to implode. Because what had happened is these people began to believe in Jesus and they were told that in Christ they are set free. And they had this wonderful freedom and, and they were free from the laws of, of all of the Levitical codes of what they were allowed to eat and not eat. And on top of that, but there were still folks who were devout Jews that had converted to the faith and, and they they were just appalled by the fact that all these people in Corinth were doing whatever they wanted to do. And they were free. And the argument was, I can do whatever I want. I can eat what I want. I don't have to wear a mask if I don't feel like it. <laughs> and the other folks are saying, no, you have to abide by these rules. And this is important. And so they asked Paul, give us some answers. Give us a clear-cut answer. Right? And so what does Paul tell them? He tells them the truth, because this much he knows. He says, it really doesn't matter what you eat. It doesn't matter whether this food was offered to idols before. It doesn't matter. You're absolutely right. You are free to do whatever you want. And your freedom enables you to do that, correct? However, what Paul says in chapter 8, verse 7, it's not everyone who has this knowledge. Some become accustomed to idols until now. And he goes on and he says, do not let your freedom be a stumbling block to somebody else. Take care, verse 9, that this liberty, this freedom of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to others. In other words, if you know that this offends somebody else, why do you persist in doing it? You're supposed to love one another. You're supposed to care for one another. So if somebody's uncomfortable, you know, so, so it, it became pretty easy for me. I can't figure out whether I'm supposed to wear a mask or not. But I know that if you do and you're comfortable, you're uncomfortable with that, I'll put it on. If that's all it takes, I'm not going to be a stumbling block to somebody else. Do not let your freedom be a stumbling block to somebody else. The term that they used early on in all this was an abundance of caution, and I'm cool with that. Do not be a stumbling block to others. But we're sitting here fighting and arguing about who's going to wear a mask and who isn't. Okay, if that's all it takes to resolve the issue, I'll put it on. But here's the dilemma. There are more difficult issues in our society than who's wearing a mask. That's the easy thing to fight over. The real challenges are there. There is division among us and I wish we could just resolve it by putting on a mask. But that's not going to do it, is it? Nope. When I was a kid growing up, I watched Superman. Anybody here like Superman? Now, when I watched Superman, I came home from school, and Superman was on television. Okay. Now, I come home, and we didn't have a color television. I'm not going to sit here and talk about, you know, how poor or rich people are. We didn't, we didn't have a color television until I was, like, in high school. But, so Superman, you know what Superman looks like, right? First off, you know who Superman was? Who played Superman? Oh, no, that was his alter ego. Who played Superman? George Reeves, I got it. Somebody told me before it's Christopher Reeves. No, I'm going back before Christopher. George did it, right? So George is the TV Superman. What does Superman dress like? Come on. He got a blue suit? He has a what? He got a red cape. Not to me, he didn't. 
He had a gray suit and a gray cape. <laughs> it was black and white. Remember when you watched Superman? I'm talking the TV version. What does it say? See if you guys can still follow up with me. How did it start out? Faster than a speeding bullet. There you go. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to tall buildings in a single bomb. This is Superman, right? How did it end? You'd see George Reeves standing there, hands on his hips, and back then they weren't very muscular looking guys, right? You know, he had the tights on, he's got his hands on his hips, and the flag's flying behind him, correct? And what does, it, what does, the, what does the text say? What does the person, the narrator say? Truth. Truth. Keep going. Justice. The American way. I don't know what any of that stuff is anymore. I don't. Somebody please tell me what the American way is. Well, see, Chevrolet used to advertise on Superman. And I learned what the American way was on the commercial because it said that it was about, America's about baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and Chevrolet. Baseball is not part of the American way anymore. They don't play it. Cancel it. Get rid of it. Not only did we cancel it, now they're trying to get it back together. And it's not just the government intervening with it. The people who professionally get paid to do it can't figure out, they're so greedy, they can't divide up millions of dollars to play a game. And that's okay, because it's not about Major League Baseball. You can't watch Little League Baseball, because they're not allowed to play. American Legion Baseball, cancel. High school baseball, all of it, canceled. So baseball's not part of the American way anymore. That's okay, we can still eat hot dogs, right? As long as there's less than 25 of you, you can eat a hot dog. Because you can't have a barbecue. Not if you live, if you live on this side of the street, you can. If you live on that side, you can't. And you don't dare go to a restaurant to get one right now. What is the American way? What do we do now? Lee Greenwood signed, signed, sang a wonderful song years ago. It said, the flag still stands for freedom, and they can't do what? Really? You don't say. Truth, justice, the American way. Freedom. I'll tell you about the American way. I come home yesterday. <laughs> I was actually at a softball tournament. You know why? Because they called and said, can you do it? And the way I looked at it, there was a bunch of 10-year-old girls that wanted to play ball. Now I'm gonna look, I know, I'm looking over Mary, I know you, you're, you're a teacher. We got teachers in the room. All of you that are teachers, wasn't there a time in your life when you used to say, I wish those kids would get off from standing and looking at that boob tube and get outside and do something? Now we tell them, I wish they'd quit going outside and doing stuff and get in front of the tube. You know, if they want to go out there and play, I'll find a way to help them. They were out playing and running around and having a good time. And they were still, last time I checked, playing softball or baseball. They're way more than six foot apart. So I came home. And it was, you know what yesterday was, right? Fourth of July. Independence Day. Anybody here? This is a great question because I already know the answer. Anybody here hear the fireworks last night? You see the fireworks? <laughs> Sounded like you're in a battle zone in some races, right? I'm talking about did you see the big fireworks displays? I did. I saw one in Pittsburgh. They were shooting off fireworks over top of the point. It was absolutely amazing. I saw it on my television. They did a virtual fireworks display last night. Because I'm happy I live in a virtual world. I want to live in a real world. I don't know about you. So we have the freedom to celebrate our freedom locked up in my living room looking at a television screen. Awful. But okay, I understand that. Because we do got to be safe. Air on the side of I'm, I'm okay. So this morning I woke up. Did 
Anybody watch the news? I don't, oh gosh, we'll get to the news in a second. So I see a news report. I had to triple check this because you never know if it's factual anymore. I saw they had a celebration in Baltimore, Maryland last night. Did you know that? At the Inner Harbor. Anybody here ever been to the Inner Harbor? What a place. The Inner Harbor in Baltimore, Maryland. Did you see the news today? Oh, just you wait. So they have a celebration in Baltimore. On the outside of the Inner Harbor, do you know what protects the Inner Harbor? Fort McHenry. Fort McHenry is known for what? It's where the flag flew and the Star Spangled Banner's written, right? So man, they're having a big thing on the 4th of July at Inner Harbor. I'm like, wow, I want to read about this. Yep. They had a mass of people gather there and they pulled down a statue of Christopher Columbus and they threw it in the Inner Harbor. Now, I'm not telling you which side of whatever to be on. I am telling you if you can't have thousands of people cheering for the fireworks display, I can't figure out why you've got thousands of people cheering for this. And it said right in the news report, all of them from various outlets. And when, the, when they tore it down and it toppled, they cheered. And I'm like, wait a minute. That's super spreading. Poor Ruth's trying to figure out how to sing hymns here. Somewhere in the midst of all this stuff is the truth, folks. There's your side, there's my side. You know, if you read, does anybody here try to watch the news? Depends on which one you read. I don't even think these people are at the same place. I used to watch CNN. You know, I, I watched CNN. I learned to watch it 28 years ago. Karen was giving birth to our son, Eddie, who you see is running around. I started watching it then because, yeah, I know because I remember that. They were running the Gulf War, okay? And I mean, you trusted Wolf Blitzer and all those guys. I mean, they were telling me, man, I watched that stuff and I mean, I knew what was going on. Now I watch it. I don't know if I can believe it anymore. That's okay, because then I tune into Fox News and it's like, what is that? I hear this side, that side, somewhere in the middle's got to be the truth, right? Because there is no such thing. We've, we can't figure out what the American way is. I'm going to tell you, I don't know, we, none of us know what justice is. When I was in college, I majored in, in, in philosophy, and I remember my first philosophy class, there was a guy named Socrates. Anybody know who that is? really smart guy. And Socrates walked around, he would do these dialogues, and he would ask people questions, and he would go up to the, to the religious leaders, and he would say to them, he says, what about faith? And what he figured out is they didn't know what they were talking about. And then he'd go to judges and magistrates, and he's talking about justice, and they'd just go around in circles, and he figured out they didn't know what he was talking about. And do you know what they ended up doing with Socrates? They killed him, because all he did is cause trouble by asking simple questions. Socrates came up with this brilliant thing. You know what he said? He said, the wise man is he who knows what? He is a fool. The smartest person is the one who knows they don't know much. So count me smart because I don't know anything. <laughs> but I know this, no one knows what justice is. I know they don't. Justice is not kneeling on somebody's neck for eight and a half minutes. That's not justice. And I could say that for 60 years, I've had people in my family that work in law enforcement in a major metropolitan area, and they would tell you that same thing. That's not justice. But I will tell you this. Going through the streets and destroying the businesses of people that worked hard their whole life, from various ethnic backgrounds, I might add, to make themselves a dry cleaner, to build up a grocery store, Trashing their dreams, burning them to the ground, that's not justice either. We don't know what justice is. We don't know what justice is. We don't know what the American way is. We have lost our direction. So the only thing we have left is truth. Somebody here, please tell me what truth is. Does anybody have a clue? Oh, that one I can help you with. John 14. Jesus said, Thomas said, I don't know where you're going. How do we know? How do we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way. 
And then he said, I am the truth. He didn't say, I speak the truth. Because, you know why he didn't say that? Because every time he talked, they didn't understand what he said. He said, you know what, I'm not going to tell you what the truth is because you're not going to figure it out. I'm going to show you what the truth is. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. If you want to know the truth, watch me, he said. I am the truth. Yes, we're not sure what all this other stuff is, but we know what that is. And it's about time that we not only remember that, but we start telling folks that. Because we have got a world that is lost. I want you to think about this for a minute. And I got, I got, good, I got good advice today, because Bob was with me. Okay, So I had actually a, a ship's captain tell me I was on the right track. Right? Think about this. Your ship is out at sea. Storm kicks up. You got a sailboat, right? Big sailboat. If the storm starts getting bad, the wind starts blowing and it's crosswinds, what's the first thing you ought to do? Pull down the sail. Don't try to speed up because you're going to capsize this thing. Second thing you're going to do is you're going to make sure somebody's got that wheel in their hand, don't you think? Well, I'll tell you what, right now, we're going down the road and we are in the midst of the storm. And we're looking for somebody to get their hand on that wheel and everybody seems to want to grab it because everybody knows what's right. But I'm here to tell you, the more we turn that wheel, nothing's happening. And you know why? Because that wheel is connected to the rudder. And if it's not connected, you can turn that wheel every which way and nothing's going to happen, correct? Well, right now we are not connected to the rudder, folks. Everybody thinks they got the best way, and they're spinning that wheel every which way but sideways. And somebody needs to reconnect it to the rudder. The other thing is, is we ought to pull down the sails and stop trying to go fast. Because we're trying to fix this and barrel down the road and spin the wheel everywhere. Let's stop, connect to the rudder, and get this thing turned around. And what's the rudder? I'll tell you what the rudder is. The rudder is what Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth. And I know the minute we say that, well, gosh, we'll probably offend somebody. Of course, you can't tell you anything anymore without offending somebody. But the fact of the matter is, we'll offend folks that maybe they're not Christian. And, but you know what? I, maybe we will. I don't know any better. All I know is what God called me to do. And I know that the way is through Jesus Christ. There might be another way. How do I know? For you, but I know this way. And it's the only way I know. And I'm not going to stop telling people that. Because I have to. Because this is the way. Jesus said, no one will go to the Father but by me. I don't know. He said it, not me. But I know that if we can get connected to that rudder, we can steer our way through this again. But without that, we're in big trouble. Big trouble. Let me tell you. I was going back because it's Independence Day. And of course, Independence Day, the 4th of July. And, and, and I was going back and thinking of some of the documents that were foundational to this nation, correct? You all know the Declaration of Independence. You know the preamble. You know how it starts, right? We hold these truths to be self-evident. What's the next line? That all men are what? Created equal. We hold that very dear, do we not? Now, the fact is, I remember my mom taught me that. And I remember way back when saying to my mother, wait a minute, all men are created equal? Where does that fit you? I was a little kid when I asked that question. And so, you know what? There's ways to amend that document. And thank God we have amended it. Because at the time they wrote it, women didn't vote. We hold these truths to be self-evident. They didn't get it right, but the foundation, at least they got it started right. That all men are created equal. What's the next line? Anybody want to help me? That they are endowed by their creator. Well, they all have rights. Why do they have rights? Because God made them equal. I told you, you got to have the rudder. If you pull God out of the equation, you got nothing. Not because I'm a preacher and I'm supposed to tell you that. You just don't. I was talking this morning and, and Betty Lou was with us. Betty Lou was a, was, a, was, a, was, a, was a kindergarten teacher. 
And so I asked her, of course, not like I can look at the nets with us. She's a preschool teacher. So when the kids misbehave and the one rips the toy out of the other one's hands, you're not allowed to do that, right? That's not right. And the child says, why, Nanette? Why can't I do that? What do you tell them? Well, you got to share. It's not nice. And he says, why? Why do I have to share? I'm bigger than he is. I'm meaner than he is. And I don't have to do that. And you come back with what? It's the right thing to do. Why? Because it is. It's not good enough. I'll tell you why it's the right thing to do. Because that's what the Bible tells us to do. Right? Love one another as I've loved you. Love your enemies. But if you can't tell them that, it doesn't make any sense. You have to have that rudder. You have to have that, 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 that because not, you're just steering and it's not connected to anything. The fact of the matter is, that's where we need to be. That's where it starts. And even the, the Declaration of Independence, it came on to say that. All men are created equal because they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Now you know what? It's become fashionable. We can't listen to that anymore. Because Tom and Jefferson wrote that. And we know that Jefferson is just an evil guy these days, right? Got to tear those statues down too. Because he had flaws and some of them were bad. And the Bible tells us that we all have this treasure in earthen vessels too. And King David had flaws. <laughs> Everybody said Moses had flaws. So Jefferson's no longer an authority. We can't talk about him. But let me ask you a question. Is Lincoln still safe? Are Lincoln's credentials still in good shape? I'm just asking. Hmm? Well, I mean, the one thing I do know about Lincoln, even in the midst of the conversations we're having, he signed the Emancipation Proclamation which did nothing more than all but start the Civil War. But he did it because he believed in it because it was the right thing to do. And the Civil War, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people lost their lives attempting to bring freedom to everybody in this country, correct? So I think Lincoln might get a pass on this. See what Lincoln wrote? Four score. Seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, and here's the best part, if you know this one, conceived in liberty. What is liberty? Freedom. Conceived in liberty, dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Where did Lincoln write those words? Where did he deliver them? In Gettysburg. Where was he standing in Gettysburg? On a battlefield. They were dedicating that battlefield. They were dedicating that battlefield. The graves of folks. He was doing a mass funeral. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, Lincoln said. And this is a hundred and how many years ago? 157 years ago he said this. We are engaged in a great civil war. Really? You know the next line? Testing. Testing whether this nation or any other nation conceived and dedicated this way can long endure. That's because this is a test, folks. This is an experiment. Because treating everyone equal and trying to do justice for everyone is an experiment and it hasn't worked anywhere else because governments are put together by monarchies, they're put together by totalitarian and fascist regimes, right? Dictators, look through your history. This is an experiment. We are testing, Lincoln said, whether this nation or any other nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met, Lincoln said, in a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who gave their lives that this nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper we should do this. In a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here, they have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. And watch this, and boy, isn't this true. For the world will little note nor long remember what we say here. Well, you folks, you knew the words to this, didn't you? 
but the world is forgetting what he said there. We are forgetting what happened there. We're forgetting the sacrifices that people made there. But it can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have so nobly advanced. It is rather for us here dedicated to the great task remaining for before us that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave their last full measure of devotion. That we, were we now will highly resolve that these dead will not have died in vain. Boy, when I look at the way things are right now, I wonder. And that this nation, anybody know the rest of it? Bring it home. That this nation, under God, the rudder, the anchor, the truth. I was once told that in the Pledge of Allegiance, we have to drop the words under God now. You know why? Eisenhower put those in there. Where do you think he got them? He pulled them out of the air? Seems like he may have got them from the Gettysburg Address. If I'm not mistaken, where does Eisenhower's, where was his farm? Gettysburg, huh? Those that have never learned that forget the lessons of history will be forced to repeat it. This nation, Lincoln said, under God, We'll have a new birth of freedom. I don't know about you folks, but I'm about due for a new birth of freedom. But it's not going to happen. Because right now we're failing the test. This nation under God will have a new birth of freedom. And the government of the people, by the people and for the people, shall not perish from the earth. I wonder how close we are. Friends, I'm going to tell you what. There are still three sides to the story. Your side, my side, and the truth. It's a shame we've come to that point. But we see it more and more every day. There's this side and there's that side and they're becoming more and more polarized. And the only way that we are going to get back to where we need to be is to realize that those two sides don't matter and the only one that does is the truth. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And the promise that he made is, what do we know about the truth? Do you know what it tells you in the Bible? The truth will do what? Set you free. On Independence Day, my brothers and sisters, I remind you that Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And the only way that we will be set free is through the truth. It will set you free. Amen. And amen. Who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
across America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above from the mountains to the prairies to the ocean white with foam God bless America my home sweet home God bless America my home sweet home